Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday. Over here in the Atlantic, we are now watching the remnants of what was Tropical Storm Emily that moved over Hispaniola and was ripped apart by the mountains here. We kind of knew this was a, a possibility that a weak storm like this with an ill-defined surface circulation would not be able to retain that surface circulation very well after moving over the mountains of Haiti. And indeed, this got ripped out and is now an open surface trough. And Recon found yesterday no closed center before it moved on shore, and the NHC was forced to downgrade this as it came up to the northwest. Convection weakened overnight as it moved over land. The mid-level center got up in here. The low-level center is still back over the Bahamas, actually kind of following the track that it would have. And if we look at the floater here, there's a little bit, the, the banding in the low levels, the curving is in here, implying that the surface center or where it would be is likely in here, following the path that it would have followed up to the northwest here. And it's possible this tries to regenerate. The NHC is giving it a 60% chance. I think that may be too generous here. This is going to take a little bit to try to fire any kind of thunderstorm activity, and certainly no development is probably going to occur um, before it tries to affect this area in here where it would have moved into. It is possible that as this recurves out like this, as a weak area of low pressure, it may try to develop on its way out. But as far as the threat to Florida and the northern Bahamas that we were discussing, probably minimal at this point, and it may bring some showers to the area, and that is about it. It was an interesting forecast with this system because we knew this was a possibility. We had a lot of variables involved. Our forecasts, and I believe the NHC also mentioned this for several discussions in a row, that the global models weren't developing it and were dissipating it over here, but their forecast remained for slight intensification. I believe that that was the right way to go, issuing a forecast that illustrated the possibilities for effects and impacts on these folks in here while leaving the possibility for dissipation open, as I also mentioned as well. So it ended up falling apart, which is in some sense good news for these folks, though Florida could have used some of this rain in here. But, you know, you can't have it all. Rain's been hard to come by from tropical systems so far this year, but that may change with time. We're going to be looking for Franklin now, and the next candidate may be this wave over here over Western Africa. This gets brought out over the Eastern Atlantic by the GFS, and it tries to develop it by three days, four days, five days out. It tries to spin it up in here and then move it on westward and keeps it as an area of low pressure of interest as it crosses the Atlantic. The European also hints at some possible Cape Verde trouble, but farther out than GFS, meaning that it's not showing this wave, but probably the one behind behind it back over Central and Eastern Africa. So we will be watching the Cape Verde wave train. It is now August, and we will have to start watching this area for potential long track storms trying to develop. And the GFS has been showing this wave train coming west and staying west, either making it into the Caribbean or into the Bahamas areas way out in the latter part of its run cycle. So it is possible that the steering pattern could bring some of these pretty far west, and we will be monitoring them as they come off over the next couple of weeks. I want to talk a little bit about our heat wave and now that we have a little bit of a break from the tropics if Emily is dissipated and talking about how the season's going to shape up. We have finished out July now and the maps for July are out. This map here is the analog package that I have showed you guys before. Not, not the analogs for this year but rather the ideal setup for hurricane landfalls. In other words, this is the average temperature anomaly, surface temperature over North America for the seasons, the peak of the hurricane seasons that had three or more hurricanes hit the United States during the hurricane season. The average is 1.5, so this is very above average, and three, three hurricanes hitting the United States is well above normal. And notice that we have a heat wave during the summer and fall over the U.S., much of the U.S., during those years. And what's interesting about it is that it stays hot from June and July and then the heat shifts north here during the peak of the hurricane season. And notice where the core of the heat is. It's warm everywhere, but the core of it is between 40 north and 45 north latitude. If we go to where June was this year, all of the heat was bottled up down in the south and it was a little bit cool off to the north. Now, if this were to stay this way all season, we have seen seasons like this before where it's really hot in the south and the core of the heat wave is right over the deep southern U.S. The way we don't, if we want an active hurricane season, we don't want this because 
what it does is it means there's a lot of deep high pressure over here and it generally suppresses activity down here and forces everything way down into the Caribbean and it stays pretty bottled up and there's not a lot of upward motion that is able to occur in this area and getting close to the United States but if this shifts farther north and if we go to July of this year notice that the core of the warmth is now shifting north more towards 40 latitude in here and although it's still very warm and Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, and here the overall core is shifting north with a little bit cooler over the very deep south part of the United States. And if this core shifts north like this, you end up implying that there is more blocking further north. And the blocking further north allows upward motion to start to bubble in here and air to rise, creating above normal precipitation the potential to support tropical cyclones getting close to the United States coastline, which is why the years that have had lots of U.S. landfalls, hurricane hits on the coast, had the heat far north, not over the deep south, but farther north over the central and northern United States. And that is what we have been shifting towards from June to July this year. It will be interesting to see if it continues. And we've had the blocking. Remember, in these analog packages, we had a ridge that extended from Texas up to the northeastern United States like this. In July and August, it starts to shift north. And this year, I didn't put up the 500 millibar maps, but this year we had the same kind of ridge. In fact, the June analog package was almost very similar to June of this year. And then July, the reason the heat shifted a little bit farther north is because the blocking is now more centered over the Great Lakes. And if this continues to shift a little bit farther north, it could open up the United States more to the potential for landfalls during the peak of the season, which is now just about upon us. We are now in the first of the peak months, August, September, and October, and things are really going to pick, pick up in the tropics. We've already had five named storms. Pretty active season so far. We haven't had any hurricanes, but those are coming. And we've seen that the steering pattern, remember we had Dawn come in here. We've had Emily getting pretty close. We've had a couple other tropical waves moving into this area. The steering pattern has been bringing moisture westward into this area of the world. And that's not necessarily going to just stop here. It's going to keep on going. And we may have some storms to deal with in this area of the world this season that will threaten land. And we may not get away this year without a hurricane landfall or a major hurricane landfall in the U.S., given the pattern. So we will have to keep an eye on this. Hopefully folks are prepared and we will continue watching for Franklin over here in the Atlantic, potentially of African or sometime over the next week or so. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.